Hello everyone, welcome back to Schneid's 15. We left off last with the uh, video on stripping the side of the truck bed. I was exhausted. I was just, I need to get done though because it rained and then snowed overnight. It was miserable, uh, but it's done now. The bed's inside. I ordered a bed liner for it. Actually, a spray in one with a shuts gun called uh, Shake, Shake and Spray or something. Shake and Shoot. It's by uh, Dominion Sure Seal. You can't buy it at Canadian Tire or anything. It's directed more per towards professionals like me, you know. So uh, we're going to put that in uh, probably once I get these bed sides in it. So I have to sand the bed sides. So I've just been starting on it. Uh, as you can see, I've actually left spots like this because that's where a dent is and it'll be easy for them to fill that and make point that it's going to be nice and straight. This stuff is straight. It's just had a little bit of pitting, uh, but I'm sure I can, I just haven't ground real hard into that. Maybe there's a bit of paint. This is 80 grit, then I got to go over it with 120 and then 220 but it's coming along really nice. The body line's really nice. I'm taking it easy on stuff. Everything's coming out good. Uh, I've probably, I don't know, been working on it for a couple hours so far, but I've got all this done and it was kind of a learning curve to get it started. And I mean, I've been pissing around with all little stuff in here that they gotta fix and just making it a real nice job. So this is what I really wanted though, was that nice straight line in here obviously it's not too straight right now because i gotta sand it more fine but you're seeing sanding marks that's why it looks a little wavy but it's all true metal in here so they're gonna have to fill this a bit and piss around with some little stuff but they'll make it nice uh but she's all sand it down and looking really good i gotta sand this down to here and then in here I got this pulled out pretty good, but I'll probably let them do this because uh, of that dent. So I really don't want to make it worse. So I'll get it sanded out for them and then they can go from there. But uh, it looks really, really good. A lot better than before. We'll sand across the back of the bed here. And I don't know about these jams, what I'll do with them. Scuff them up somehow, because I really can't sand that, but what can you do? And same with the front. Something neat I'll show you guys is that, where is it? Well, this stuff all stripped off really nice. Never had to sand anything. Over in here, see this? 0713. Those are original numbers before the truck was primed and painted. Still on there from back in, this bed was a 94 or five, I think maybe at an early 96 bed. So it's pretty cool that that's all in there still. And obviously that this is smooth when they paint it. So I don't know, I'm gonna talk to my buddy that's doing the body work and see what I all gotta do up in here. <laughs> I've sanded 80, 120, 220. I don't know if it's perfect. Still see some lines and stuff through it. That's how it's gonna be. They gotta do 320 and they gotta do some body work on it when I bring it to the shop. But either way, she's come along really nice. They can figure that out. They're, uh, I don't know if it, why some of it's a little bit darker. I'm not really sure. I don't know if that's just got some pitting in it or what. Uh, I'll try and figure out how to uh, get that out of there. Maybe there's something I can put on or they'll know at the body shop, I imagine. Well, they'll have to. But that's done. This side, like I say, is really straight. It turned out a lot better. Either way, she looks pretty sweet and uh, I'm really happy with it. All the lines are nice and crisp and stuff and really, really good. So the inside, I just scuffed up with some, uh, actually 60 grit because I was using it by hand. Went around, did 80 grit on top of these bed rails and kind of scuffed between, or not the rails, but the ridges and scuffed between. Uh, so now I'm taping it off 
and this is scuffed, went over everything. And I got some bed liner coming tomorrow. I don't want it to come out these holes. I'm gonna spray in all this stuff. I don't want it to come out onto here, obviously. There's some screw holes, which I'm gonna weld, hold them shut in the future, but I wanna get this sprayed. I'm trying to get all the dusty, dirty crap out of here now so uh, I can get it all done and don't have to worry about it. Cause this, I've had to run with its fan on all day, blowing stuff outside so it's not too dusty in here. But uh, she's coming along. So we're gonna use this uh, shake and shoot tomorrow made by Dominion Sure Seal. Apparently it works really good in a professional auto body shop to use it. So we're gonna try that. I just gotta tape off the back here and uh, then I'm gonna go around and wipe it all with Varsol or not Varsol, with some uh, acetone, just give it a wipe and clear it up and have it ready for tomorrow. I gotta pull those tow hooks because I don't want them sprayed under the strap down hooks and we're gonna be ready to spray tomorrow then. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, so I finished off with the sanding, sand at the interior of the bed. I left off with uh, spraying everything out with air to get it, get all the dust out from sanding the paint. And then I took uh, acetone and paper rags and wiped the whole thing to tack it. I put the bed liner on overnight because, you know, we got a cat in here and they walk around in there. My luck the paint wouldn't stick there so i got that on so they couldn't get in there and it's a brand new bed liner i want to stretch it out because it was a little bit tight this had a big bow in it from it being tight so now it's stretching out a bit so that's good uh but anyways this is what we're doing this is called shake and shoot i got it from the auto parts store i don't think you can really buy this on the shelves i shouldn't say that it's it's not like a crappy tire diy thing it's called BSSBL, made by Dominion Sure Seal. So it comes with the applicator gun, which is pretty sweet because there's other kits that you can buy and they don't come with the gun. So you get the shuts gun with it. Uh, it gives you, well, I should tell you about that. But what comes in the kit, oh, those are nozzles. You gotta buy those for the end of the gun. And I wasn't sure if I had any, and I didn't wanna get out here and get stuck. But basically the kit is super simple, guys. Uh, you got your, your hardener here, or your catalyst, I should say. And then basically that's, that's it. So it's full up to a certain point in here and they give you four of those. So there's like lots enough to do a big bed. So all you do when I open these, you, uh, as far as I've read, as you can see down in here, it's down, I don't know, three quarters of the way or so. And then you fill it up to here with the catalyst. So you just pour that into there, fill it up to here, shake it for a couple minutes, throw your gun in, and then you're ready to spray. So super, super easy to, to use and you can use one. And I mean, you can, if you don't use all the cans, you have some left over. So you can get this online for 150 bucks. I think it's called linercoatings.ca. I got it from the local parts store. I got an account there and got a pretty good price on it. it. Cost me a bit more, but I want to get this done. So we're gonna wait for the shop to get up to temperature here. It's only about 14 degrees Celsius. We're gonna get it up a few more degrees just to help the cause. And we'll uh, get going on this. So stay tuned and we'll let you know how it goes. Apparently the auto body shops use this stuff and it looks kind of like Linex. So it's a lot better quality than the stuff you can buy on the shelves. So just going through the instructions, regulator threads on, that's a tapered fitting there, so tighten that up. It kind of seems kind of cheap, but I mean, for being free, it's, you know, it's not too bad. Uh, 
thread this on, it comes with two different lengths of rods because regular shuts gun containers are deeper, I guess. And this, these are more shallow, so it comes with a short one and a long one. So we're gonna put the short one on, you just thread it into there. And then you need your fitting for the end, which I'm gonna put on. And we're pretty well ready to shoot. I just pulled off the tunnel cover. We're in a mass area a bit, as you can see. Well, everything's tacked already, but as you can see, I've scratched everything down. And uh, I put some big scratches in the middle there. And then on the side, I actually hit it with a wire wheel. You can't see it now that it's been tacked, but you can see it's kind of hazy everywhere so it's ready to go uh i'm probably just gonna put a bit of tape in those holes just so i don't fill those up with bed liner because i don't want that full because i don't want those box bolts to be all gummed up but uh, i pounded the front of the box straight here there was it was a little bit separated in here in the seam in there so i just gave it a couple hits with the hammer and she tightened right up but this will tighten up all of our stuff, like gaps in there and stuff. It should fill those right up. So that'll be nice and make it a little bit more watertight than it was from factory, which they weren't at all. And uh, yeah, we're pretty well good to go. We're just getting the temp up here and we'll be ready to shoot. Well, I got the gun all hooked up here. Put a bit of Teflon on it. I don't know if it's needed or not. I don't know about that regulator, if it works right or not. I'm just gonna use the one on the compressor. Uh, but anyways, it's started on there. We're using a pretty sweet mass job here. We're using our tape around our garage door hinges or our tracks. So I got to do a little bit more back here, but I think that's a pretty sweet tape job. We'll get this other side done here. We stole some of mom's packing paper and uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, so we're all masked off here. Good to go. Uh, what I did, I left those open because I want to spray in them actually. But underneath where the bolt holes come up, I uh, left a hole for the screws. There's a hole right there. Put duct tape on the bottom side of it so it'll peel off easy. And guys, just be sure when you're doing this, uh, like right there, there's drain holes there and there. You don't want it to spray on the floor obviously. So just put a little bit of something there to plug her up. And we're about ready to spray. So our spray instructions, I have it here so I can mix. You take the cap off of part A, the instructions say, and there's port, part B catalyst, go to this line right here. So it's down in there. It says exactly 250 milliliters. Honestly, I don't have anything, well I do, but it's food grade and I don't wanna use it uh, to measure it properly. So. We're just going to pour that into there with a light and make sure we're close to that line and hope for the best. So we'll do that, shake it for a few minutes. It says two, but obviously we'll go a bit longer. And uh, then we're going to start to spray. Your gun should be set at 55 to 60 PSI. You can lower it, up it, whatever. I'm going to do what they recommend and you can change that. It'll just change your texture to make it more fine or uh, thicker. Okay, so we'll pour our catalyst in. What I'm doing guys, when I go in, I just wash the brim of this can. You, you can tell it's down about a quarter inch from the brim. And when I look in here, it's about a quarter inch down. So I'd say we're dead on. Now, put our cap on, start shaking her. Obviously make sure that's tight. We'll shake this for a few minutes and uh, then we'll start shooting guys. So it's been about two minutes. What I'm gonna suggest guys is flip it over and go like this. And then if there's anything on the bottom of the can, it'll hopefully get that out. Seems to work best going like this and up and down. I'm sure the more you shake the better. So we're gonna go an extra minute at least. Cause it says minimum two, so I mean, Mixing can be critical when you're spraying, so, well, it's always critical, but we're gonna give it an extra bit and let's get to shooting. All right, I did a couple test passes on a piece of cardboard. Looks good. We're gonna start under here just because I don't know how this is gonna spray yet. So we want the critical stuff on the bottom, I'm thinking in my head, everybody's got their own way, but we're gonna start over here.
Okay, that's two cans done. Pretty good, I think. So we'll see what we can do. Okay, I threw her in wide angle there for you guys to see. Right here, you can see where it's drying faster, but uh, it's been about five minutes now. So the three cans I went through and I was like, still had this much left. I was kind of, honestly guys, get panicking a bit. And then I dumped the rest out of the three cans because you get more out of a can if you shake it, but I didn't. I want the smooth lines. So I took the three cans and dumped them together and I got about half of a can and I finished it. And then I went around and nicely over sprayed everything. So now I'm just peeling the tape before it dries too much. Cause you're supposed to use a special tape so it doesn't rip and I'm scared of that. So now it's kind of tack dry. We're gonna just peel this and then we'll show you the end result. Looks really good so far. Okay, first impressions as it's still wet. You can tell that I did this first and that last because it's wet. But the texture, guys, is amazing. Uh, I touched it up in a few spots. As you can see, like right there is wet. That's at the end. Uh, got a couple globs on the end in here, which is not a big deal at all. It definitely brings all of the uh, dents out of the bed, which I'm not concerned about. I run with a rubber bed mat, but Honestly, I really wanted the red interior to match the truck because that's what it had before and I was going to leave it original, but this looks pretty darn sharp. So I'm really, really happy with this, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, touch base with you guys here in about an hour or so and see what it looks like when it's dried more. But underneath, like I even sprayed underneath there. I didn't want any green showing all the way underneath everything. So now when they can paint it red, nobody will ever know that this bed was green unless they start sanding. So we'll check back with you soon and let you know how it is. Okay, it's 10 o'clock now. We started spraying at about nine, drying a bit more. This back spot that I did last I laid it on thick, of course, because this is what sees the most use of the bed. Drying really good and really smooth and the texture's evening out really, really nice. So when you see me spraying all wacky on angles and stuff, I mean, I, I skim coat over top of it or, or dust coat it, whatever they call it, to smooth it out, but really happy with it. Good morning, everyone. It is the Tuesday after our Canada Day long weekend. I just pulled off the tunnel cover there. Uh, all the fumes are pretty well out of the garage now. The camera, as you can see, really, really picks up all the imperfections in here. This is where I kind of laid it on thicker after with, like I sprayed on top so you get a bit more gloss out of it. But honestly, like it went on really nice. It's got a really nice texture, guys. Uh, as you can see, like with just me stepping on it here, see my boot prints there uh, and up there. Like once I use this thing for a week, that glossiness is going to be gone and you'll never even notice that difference. From my experience, we'll do a review on it. But overall, it says five to seven seven days for a full harden but i mean i've seen a lot of spray and bed liners different brands guys and this is probably like the closest i mean linex seems to always be like the most superior but you can't 
I mean, it costs you a fortune for like less than 200 bucks, 150 bucks for this spray and liner. I mean, in the camera right now, it looks kind of crappy because you just pick out all the glossiness. But otherwise, guys, I would not hesitate to buy this product. It was sprayed in really nice. And if, uh, especially if you had a short bed, I think I panicked a little bit and tried to lay it a little bit thin and the back got a little bit thick because I sprayed it after when I had more and it, it anyways it turned out great I'm really happy with it and uh, I think it looks excellent so yeah uh, I would definitely recommend this stuff I've used like dupe color bed armor easy liner all that cheap stuff that you can get at Canadian Tire and other places it sucks don't go with it it all fades out and yeah so this stuff so far so good we'll let you know what it is like and maybe i don't know half a year or something we'll do a review on it but like i say once you get some dust in here it's just gonna take that gloss off of everything and it'll be just fine but anyways to get on to what we're doing today is we are gonna take well we got everything sanded out well now i got a little bit of paint removal to do on the very front of the bed in here also and uh well that's gonna get oversprayed red in there so i'm not concerned about it but there's that dent underneath i gotta take care of and do a couple tack welds on this brace where it's broke right there uh we're gonna fit my tailgate with the new hinges on here and see how it fits and yeah just piss around with a bunch of little stuff well i got the welder set up with 0.25 wire we got this uh, blue shield here now for uh, argon for shielding gas. It's a CO2 argon mixture with some other stuff in it too. I think it's their blue shield brand. Anyways, I'm just borrowing it. Uh, so we got our welder set to C and number five for, uh, I had it a bit less, but I'm bringing it up to five. That's what Lincoln's saying for this thickness of metal. It's kind of nice for me not being a welder to be able to look at a chart like that. That's kind of why I bought this welder. But whatever happened here, it jarred this. And you can see in here that this is kind of separated right there. And there's a couple broken welds down here. So what we got to do is weld that. So these were my first couple tacks. I had it on a lower B heat setting. And I just went over top of uh, the other weld just to tack it into place. Really, I'm going to grind that. But this one is one I just finished. It looks really nice. Uh, like a rosette weld, they call it. That was my first try, so we're gonna see what the other ones look like, but I just take my drill bit and drill a 5 16 hole through the first layer, and then you basically just fill material up on the outside. So we're gonna put a couple more in because it's a little weak down in here, and I don't quite like that, so we're just gonna uh, fix that and get it all tacked into place and then start doing our, figuring out what's all bent in here and twisted or whatever. Hopefully it's not too bad, everything looks pretty straight. The only thing I'm thinking is this could be out a little bit here, but it moves super easy as you can see. So anyways, we're just gonna put a couple tacks in there and fill them and we'll be on our way of test fitting our tailgate. So as you can see, I've went around, I've been playing with my heat settings for A or B. Uh, they're not turning out too bad. I mean, they're getting ground off for a, for a hole with no bottom to it. I think I did pretty good. Uh, so I tacked them all shut. Everything's looking good. Those ones were smaller, but there's these bed rails all over this thing. So uh, we're just tacking them, grind them shut or grind them flat. And then when I have a tunnel cover on or whatever i'm not gonna have leaks in there and it's just how it was from factory so we may as well make it back that way because we got the time and may as well make it right okay all of our top pieces are welded there's this chrome 
trim that one around the outside. So right here, there was a hole. Uh, here, there was a hole here and here. So I just filled them quick and ground them out. That one wasn't the best. Um, but as you know, there's a big dent in here. This was all pushed in. Uh, this brace right here was bent right over. So I haven't ground anything out yet. Um, obviously those are my welds that I fixed there. But this, I got it all back to where, where it should be. Uh, this held the line actually on the angle. So I just kept bringing it into the crack and welding it. And then I went back over it. So I'll grind that out now. I just wanted to seal it up. Uh, I got it pretty straight here. I'm gonna hammer it, put that brace back on. But if you remember from the picture at the starting, it was pushed way up in this bracket was actually bent right over in there. So I've got it pretty good. I'm really, really happy that I got it this far actually. Then I can hammer this back straight in there to get everything to line up. Once that, once this, I got the crack together. Once this bends in, it should push out this dent right here. If I hit it, give it a whack, I think, in my inexperienced tin whacking skills. But uh, we're gonna do our best to help out the body guy and keep our bills pretty good. That one is really straight. A couple of these got a little bend in them underneath right there. So I'm gonna work that. And then we're pretty well ready to take this thing to paint. So I've just been hammering at this with my hammer and dolly because there is a crease in here from when this bent. Uh, I was looking at the other side and it, I got that pretty straight there. As I can, as I say, I'm working on it, but if you look at this side, it just kind of swoops out there and then bends down. So that's what I'm trying to mimic. I got the swoop out part done. Now I got to get it bent down. Obviously it looks terrible in here with all this welding and stuff, but uh, it's coming along. So we're gonna get that crease in it from here down hopefully we can clamp that and bend it down and then we can get this welded on here all right again guys i'm sorry about this video i'm not a welder so i'm a little bit frustrated with stuff i've uh, always been a stick welder that i've used or not been a stick welder it's just what i've used and now this uh, new mig that i've been using is a little bit different now that i've got the hang of it it's really come along but uh, i think she's off and ready to paint i got the gas cap in there fit it um down here the rest is up to them but i think i got that pretty damn straight for not being a body guy and for this being all cracked i gotta do some sanding on it and stuff yet um i mean that all looks pretty damn good the only issue that i had was i fit at my tailgate and it didn't it wanted to rub so i went and got the old tailgate put it on because it was meant for this bed to see if it was an issue with the gate or the bed because this gate has a little bit of a bow in the middle of it if you look right there just tiny not much but uh, i thought maybe it was this gate and uh anyways i just got it shut but since it was damaged over here, it was rubbing on the corner in here. It's good to go now. It's not rubbing now. It's, it's close, but it is not rubbing and it won't hit. So I'm happy with that. Uh, same with the other side and it shuts good. So, and I have it level underneath here. It's on an angle, but it's square, so. Uh, it's, we know it's not twist, twist out of shape because these things do flex a lot. Well, my camera cut out there. I didn't, uh, apparently I ran out of storage. I've been filming for another channel. I started called Previous Century Preservation. I had a few couple hour long videos on here or footage, so I had to delete them. <clears throat> but we just got rid of the decals off of the tailgate. You can see the difference in the fading there. So she's going to be a bit brighter. I actually like that it fades darker. It's weird because stuff usually always fades lighter. Or, yeah, lighter. And that's lighter under there and it's darker over top. So, uh, anyways, I uh, got a little ahead of myself. I never filmed this because I didn't think you guys would think it was too exciting, which it wasn't. Uh, I took some wood, built a little stand under here, drilled up through into the frame. I'm going to put in a couple other braces right here just a couple two foot braces that's all they are and uh then i actually put this cross member across just for some support and i was thinking man i got this weird uh lawnmower to pick up for my grandpa and he lives near the body shop so i, I want to drop this box off and 
use the trailer to bring this lawnmower back up. So I had these old snowmobile dollies laying around and they just slid right in there and there. And I just slid one to the front. And I mean, this thing, you can roll it anywhere now. So I think when I get to the body shop, we'll slide her off and uh, bring it to the, uh, or then he can take it and roll it around into the paint booth, wherever. And uh, I can take the trailer. So pretty sweet setup if you ask me. Uh, I shot a little bit of paint into those uh, openings there. When he sprays it, I'm gonna let him keep that wide open. Don't put anything in there and spray that. And same with under here. Uh, I'll get him to tape off these so they're black, but otherwise underneath when he's over spraying here on this stuff, I want that all red to go up in there. So hopefully it works good. Uh, but yeah, everything under here, you can never tell it was green, except where it wore through where the paint stripper hit a couple spots. Uh, this panel here had a little bit of a ding in it, and I actually figured out that if I tighten these right here, that these braces will twist, and it causes the actual panel, because it's just a little piece of sheet metal, right? So it'll cause it to bow a bit. Uh, same with that one there, I got it good now and that one's perfect this one since you guys know it was all dented in uh now you can see it better i think i got it pretty close i actually measured because i was concerned that it looked like this was on too much of an angle here so i measured from a good spot in here up to the bed floor and it was like 16 and a quarter inches on this side i know that side's perfect because it never had a dent it was 16 and a quarter and then i measured back here because i thought something looked funny over there versus here so i measured from this tab right here up to the bed floor in the exact same spot and touched my everything was perfect with measurement and we're within about a 16th of an inch or so maybe an eighth which <laughs> I'm sure it was out that far from factory. I think it just looks a little bit funny because this is pushed in here still. They can hopefully get their slide hammer on and I'm hoping here and pull this out. But this and this brace that I welded in are level and then, which I gotta clean this up still. Uh, it looks pretty ratty right now. Uh, but they this dent right here I think is what's throwing off my view from back here. It looks like that's way up just because it's pushed in in that top right corner below the tail light. And now when you look at it from this side, I can't get back far on this side. See how this one doesn't look like it's up as much? It still is on an angle. I didn't really realize it as much, but just that little bit of thrown off up in there, it throws the whole thing off. So she's uh, pretty well ready to go. I'm going to go over it once more. They're going to sand it all, but... Like I said, I just did this all to help them. Uh, inside's good. Got some water in here. My parents' cat pissed in the damn thing. So uh, I've been putting some cleaner on it. Apparently he doesn't like this. He's never done it before. We've had him for years. Great tomcat runs around outside. But he was in the shop and apparently didn't like that. So we're going to get this thing out of here. As always guys, thanks for watching and please give the channel a like and a subscribe. If my videos interest you, please click on my channel and check out my other videos.